For years, there have been reports that people have found a way to make a motor run on water. And for years, there have been conspiracy theories about how these backyard inventors have been paid off or even murdered. None of the conspiracies has ever been proven. And as far as the scientific community is concerned, no one has created a water engine. But now an Auckland man claims he's done it, turned H2O into fuel. So we sent Sarah Hall to investigate. It looks like a normal motorbike cruising at 100 k's in the far north. But there's one crucial difference. This bike is apparently running on water. Water that's been modified according to a secret formula by an Auckland inventor, Steve Ryan. Is it the holy grail of fuel research? Um, I would say that uh, the person that can find out how water can harness the amount of energy that it has, yes, have cracked something. And it's an Auckland boy with no background in science. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a hell of a claim. If it's true, it changes the world. Yeah, it'll be cleaner, greener, safer. Um, our reliance on uh, fossil fuels will disappear. Put simply, water is H2O. A mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. The big car manufacturers are already working hard to develop cars to run on hydrogen. They're extracting it from water and storing it in a fuel cell. It will power a motor, but so far it's been expensive and inefficient. What Steve claims to have done is keep the hydrogen in the water and use it to power an ordinary engine. Put simply, what is it? What we've done is, is actually entrained the hydrogen in the water to make it fire. And you're saying, to your knowledge, that's never been achieved before? No. We are taken to an Auckland warehouse to check out Steve's water fuel. And basically what we've got is just an internal combustion engine. It was a Suzuki motorcycle. It's a 350cc engine, carburetor, fuel tank, fuel. Okay, so it looks like water. It is. It's a water-based fuel. All we're doing is just tipping some in here. Yep. Yep. And what we're going to do is put a lid on there. Right, so that's for me to hold. That's for you to hold, please. Because we're going to test this later on. And I'm going to just tip it in here, which is a fuel tank. And then what we'll do, I'm just going to get you to stand back for a moment. And then what we're going to do is stand back a bit and we'll crank this up. What did I just see? Uh, you saw a bike running on water, on a water-based fuel. People would say that you, you're joking. Yeah. It, and it can't happen. They're entitled to their opinion. Um, and, and that's it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what someone says. It's happening. So it's water. You've changed the structure of the water, but you haven't added anything. Like there's no hidden petrol in no, here. No, there's no petroleum, no carbons. No. Steve Bryan says the fuel is the invention. There's nothing particularly new about the bike, apart from a simple modification of the carburetor. These two here? So we got an independent mechanic to check it out, Steve Mason from Albany Toyota. Well, there's no alternative fuel supply anywhere, actually, because it's all going straight into the top here. So there's, um, well, for one, there's no room to put anything else. So, Steve, in your experience, with this bike, you've said that there's nothing unusual about it. What would you say if, if we said that he's putting basically water in here? Well, without seeing it, I wouldn't believe it for a start.
One of those convinced that Steve has done what he said he's done is next-door neighbour Brian Connell. He's been an engineer for more than 30 years and has watched Steve's work in progress. How sure are you that it is water? Well, I'm pretty positive because I've seen him take the water out of the tap. He won't let me see the mix, but he says, here it is, there's the water. Mixes it. There it is. But it's definitely not octane. I mean, any octane you can taste or you can smell. Any octane, no matter what it is, you can taste it or I'm sure it'll burn you. Mm. So I'm, you're positive it's water? I'm positive it's water. Steve Ryan gave up his job in finance to become a full-time inventor. For more than eight years, he's been tinkering with this idea, starting off in a shed at the back of his property. If he's achieved a water fuel, then he's beaten researchers all round the world who have spent hundreds of millions of dollars. How can you have done it when physicists, scientists with billions of dollars worth of funding can't do it? It's quite simple. If, if for example, I was to um, um, go to university and study chemistry, I'd be reading a textbook. So I, I would know what I can and can't do. But when you actually don't have that formal training, you continue to go down the track of believing that you can do it until you prove, you, prove to yourself that it can't be done or it can be done. Are you potentially the next Bill Gates? I think he's a bit light. What do you mean by that? Um, the all you need to work out is what the fuel is per uh, per year, what the revenue streams for the fuel per year, and then you need to just work out what percentage of the market you'll get. And if you're working on a one percent, two percent, three percent, you're talking telephone numbers. So potentially you could make. Billions and billions of dollars off this technology. Quite possibly. Very good. Steve Ryan has filed a patent to protect his findings, but it will take more than a year to come through. Initially, he told us he wouldn't show us the formula or tell us how he was making his fuel. What is your motivation for coming forward now? Um, for protection, because I believe that. Um, what the further I go down the track of developing this and filing the patent and having the patent being disclosed to the world, um, I will have a lot of people come out of the woodwork, organisations, governments, that will want to play. In fact, Steve Ryan claims he's already had contact by the US Defence Department wanting to know about his research and he's had unusual hits on his website. I have... Um, a risk management team that look after me um, and they put in protocols in place. Um, I don't have a vehicle that I drive. I have vehicles that I use. It's all very James Bond, isn't it? It has to be. People will say, this guy is just a nutter. No, I'm probably eccentric. And my, quite a few people call me quite loose, but um, the proof's already in the pudding. Yep, right in. OK. So is Steve Ryan's fuel one that could change yeah. the world? Or is he carrying out some sort of elaborate hoax? Just last week, he decided he would give us a bit more of a clue about how he makes his fuel. Yes, it's New Zealand okay. water. Sweet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to... I'll hold it yep. and you can just tip it in. The water goes into this box and 20 minutes later it comes out the other end. You put these two wires together. Yep, couple little wires together. We were allowed to look inside to observe the secret process, but weren't allowed to show you. We can confirm there was no hidden battery, no electricity, no sign of any other liquid. Put it into the little tank, which is definitely empty. Yep. So, in it goes. I poured the fuel into the bike and then saw the bike drive off. Proof? Well, this time we brought in another expert, Isham Idris, a professor of chemistry at Auckland University. Well, my first impression is nonsense. 
That's, you know, and I think that's where I stick to it f so far, because to me it is still nonsense. Why? Well, simply because you cannot get more energy out, you cannot get energy out of something without putting energy. That doesn't actually smell of anything. Professor Idris believes what could be happening inside Steve's little box is a process called electrolysis. It's basic science. Put two metals in the water, connect them up, and hydrogen bubbles will form. But he cannot understand how that produces a fuel to run a motorbike. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. Have you got any theories on why no. that happened? No. No. You no. can't explain it? No, I cannot. 